How much does a condo or a house cost along the subway? Stay tuned to this week's episode of Prime Property. Promise you, it'll be worth it. Good day, Toronto. Welcome to another episode of Prime Property. So glad you could join us here. A happy Chinese New Year to those who celebrate it. It's apparently the year of the golden pig, which means lots of prosperity and fecundity. It's a word I just learned today, which apparently means an abundance of offspring. Okay, so it's pretty funny. So if you're trying for kids, best of wishes for you and best luck in 2019. In today's episode, there's a very, very good map that was created by Vizukas of what a house and a condo would cost along the subway line. It's a very good infographic to give you an idea of how much things cost in the area. So here's the map for you guys. If you guys have never seen it before, I'll blow it up on the screen here. But if you also want to have a bigger version of it or you want to save it to your computer, I'll leave a link in the description below so you can save that file. At first glance for me, this map it was really ridiculously overwhelming, but it does provide a very good approximation of how much things cost in that area along the subway line. So here are my thoughts initially of how accurate the map is. It's about 90% there. There are one or two things that were a little bit off by when I was looking at it, so I did do a little bit of due diligence, but more on that a little bit later, okay? So the way Zucasa sourced the information was obviously through Treb Toronto Real Estate using the numbers from 2018. And the radius around each subway station was about 800 meters, so almost a kilometer. First off, let's talk about house prices, okay? This is a really good confirmation that basically all houses along the subway lines are over $1 million, except in Scarborough. There are some value properties to be had along the subway line, on the Bloor subway line specifically, by Scarborough for sure, and it has much upside for growth. For the investors out there, this is where in Scarborough you can actually able to convert a post-war bungalow into two units, so one at the top and a basement, and then use the buy, rental, refi, rent strategy. If this is something you're interested in, definitely give me a call because you know what? These contacts are very sorry, these properties are very far and in between. So you definitely want to give me a call. Leave my contacts right here. Anything along the highly coveted young subway line is above $1.5 million. With your highest prices between Eglinton and Shepherd in the midtown part of Toronto, where basically all the McMansions are, especially the ones near the bridal path. Prices are pushing as high as $3 million in the York Mills area. Looking at the house prices in the downtown core, I'm suspect as to see what houses were actually used to arrive at the freehold prices by Union Station, King, Queen, St. Andrew, and Osgood. That part of Toronto doesn't really have any freehold houses as it's really just a concrete jungle of apartments and office buildings. And to add that, to be able to buy a freehold property in that area for $1.5 million, hmm, fishy, fishy, right? So that really made me look myself on Treb and I couldn't really find anything except for properties that were mislisted. So they were put in the wrong area by Union Station. So make sure when you're looking at that downtown core, take it with a tiny grain of salt, maybe a little bit bigger. Although you can get some freehold properties east of Young along uh, Dundas and College and Wellesley Station, for around that price, those are a little bit accurate. On the condo front, the prices are pretty spot on. You can basically see that most condos are hovering around the $600,000 to $700,000 mark. That'll be either a one bedroom or a two bedroom, depending on where you are along the subway line. This just kind of confirms that what we've been talking about a lot of times on the channel from last year and this year. What people can afford doesn't really change, but what you get does change. So the sub under $800,000 market is the stronger condo market, and that is still affordable to the average Tontonian. A $700,000 condo in the downtown core is probably a small two bedroom in 2018, or maybe like a one plus one with parking because parking is getting pretty expensive in downtown now. When you take that money to the west side by Christie Station or Hyde Park, that's probably a two bedroom with parking. When you take that exact same money and move it to the east, or the north, it's probably around the same thing where maybe in Eglinton, Lawrence, York Mills, it's a tad bit more expensive. Of course, there are nodes along the subway line that similar to the houses, you can see there's a significant drop off. And again, there's a reason for that, mainly in the Scarborough area. Take the example east of Woodbine, okay? That's in Scarborough. Generally, I tend to tell my clients to avoid that area because there is not much growth really going on. The prices are starting around 400000 and that's just to show you that there's no real lift in the market. There's no appreciation while that in the entire area of Toronto is going up. Builders are not really building there either. So think about it. When was the last time you heard me talk about or anyone talk about a pre-construction condo by Scarborough Town Center? The condos there are also quite old right now. They're large because they're old, but their maintenance fees are super, super high too. So from an investment standpoint, it doesn't really make sense. 
Now, when you look at the Shepherd line, the prices seem relatively low right now because those are also older condos. But that entire strip is very, very developed and many new condos are coming up. That's going to push the average price much higher in the coming years when they do close. It's got a lot going for it from the subway access, the 401, the 404, the Don Valley Parkway and tons of amenities, including Baby Village. The other area along the subway line developing right now is north of Lawrence West Station by Yorkdale. It's an older part of town that it's slowly gentrifying and builders are actually developing there right now. Although I would say it's the most concentrated area in that node is north of the 401 and if you are investing, I would go north instead of south of the 401. I hope that sheds a bit of light on this amazing map Zukasa put together. Until next time guys, happy real estate.